Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Gwadabia Mila, has called for an immediate fix to the Nigerian police force in a way that public confidence can be restored. He said a lot will be achieved if issues regarding recruitment and training, remuneration and welfare, responsibility and accountability are honestly tackled. This is coming on the heels of the recent killings of a footballer playing with Remo Stars Football Club, Tiamiu Kazim, in Chagamu Ogun State. At a public hearing by the House Committee on Police Affairs, chaired by Representative Usman Belio Kumo, the Speaker bemoaned the recent alleged extrajudicial killing of Kazim, a man of the Nigerian police. But Apiamila noted that when the agencies that should protect the lives and property of the people become predatory, they lose the fate of the public and become incapable of delivering on their responsibility. The speaker also said that although the public hearing with the theme repositioning the Nigerian police for an enhanced delivery might come with some uncomfortable truths, the Nigerian police should take home the contributions of stakeholders as they would be the ultimate beneficiaries. Joining me live in the studio to discuss this development is a public affairs analyst, Golahan Olujede. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for having me. We also have joining us via telephone human rights activist and convener and SAS advocacy, Shegu Awosayan. Thank you very much you for very joining much. us. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, we are barely getting over the death of Chima and the pursuit for justice for him. And this happens. What are we to take or make rather of this sequel to an alleged debt at the hands of SARS officials? Can you take that again? Okay, I'll take the question again. I'm asking, we're still trying to get over the debt of Chima and trying to get justice for him, and now this has happened. What do you make of this repeat attack by SARS officials on civilian? All right. Um, I think it's always best to understand that there are various tactical squads within the police formation. There have been uh, so many silos that have been created, which have most often lost their purpose. So because of lack of supervision, the death of leadership, these people run rogue, and they are mostly running amok as we speak. And in order to properly manage that, a lot of overhauling and restructuring needs to be done within the police formation, pending the time the police reform bill will be passed. We are engaging a culture of impunity, and there is never a switch. And the reason why we're hearing most of these things as if it is increasing is because awareness is getting more rampant. People are coming, becoming aware. People are becoming bolder to report these cases, especially to the appropriate authorities who can do something about it. It is no longer business as usual where police will do things or commit crimes and say nothing will happen. Something is now happening. With the case of uh, the loss of Tiamiu, we have seen what has happened within days. If you recall, the moment this happened three days ago or so, I tweeted that the situation is being managed to the best of our ability and reach to avoid a total breakdown of law and order. And I requested that the impunity of the police officers and tactical units in Ogun State, you know, as working and the force headquarters need to overhaul the leadership there. And as I said yesterday, that was exactly what happened. The Zona Intervention Squad was handed back to the CPs of the state and further restructuring within the entire tactical squad is ongoing as we speak. I'm sure they will release a communique on how that's going to work so that people can actually understand what's going on. When, when so last... Silos, okay. uh, go ahead, go finish on, your man. thoughts. 
Hello. Can you hear me? I said, go ahead and finish yes. your thought. I was going to interject and in, uh, to the next question. Okay. Okay. So what we are asking for? Remember the demand for the NSAS reform police engine. We are saying that all these silos should be shut down. Tactical squads are like soldiers within the police system. They are not meant to be roaming the streets with guns. Because when you put men of war on peaceful streets, they will make war. So they are only supposed to be out when there is a, a distress cause. And they must not throw away their uniform. We are having the confusion now. Because citizens cannot tell apart SARS operatives from SACS operatives, from SACS operatives, or from ICIS or STS, or what have you. We have several formations. The Special Anti-Robbery Squad, Special Anti-Kidnapping Squad, Special Anti- uh, Special Tactical Squad, Zona Intervention Squad, and there are so many others. But the moment you see a police officer that is not wearing uniform, people say, I have been attacked by SARS. So it becomes very difficult for you to investigate unless we know who operated in that unit for that day, in that area for that day. Let but me, the let people me, don't can't tell the difference. Let me interject and ask you uh, something um, based on there is need for certain changes based on what you're saying. When last we spoke, you expressed optimism that the police reform bill would address the concerns of police brutality and abuse of power. Are you still confident that that bill will be enough? Well, the, bill, the, the problem we're having basically with the entire police structure is the law that set them up. We are still working, we are still using the constabulary, which is the Police Act of 1943, over 70-something years old. So the law does not reflect the society in the now. And that is the first fundamental thing that needs to be restructured, so that human rights provisions can be prioritized within the operations of the police itself. The police itself should not be oppressive we should not continue to be talking about barracking the police while we are requesting for community policing. It is, it is a, a contravention. It is not even, it doesn't show we understand what policing should be within a democratic system. How does this development reflect on the rebranding of SARS that was done earlier by the vice president <coughs> after the social media outcry? Well, the, the, the issue is this. We know that we have uh, the death of, uh, or we have a very minimal number of police officers policing a highly populated nation. We have about 350,000 police officers, of which over 150,000 are following VIPs. So we have virtually one police officer to over 600 people which is not functional, especially in a polarized environment like ours. But again, there's also this argument of arming the police, training the police, funding the police, and the rest of it. But the issue is, if you are to look at the complexity of our society and arm the police based on the complexity of the society, each police officer should be driving an armored tank. But we are driving and pushing for an intelligence-led policing. We are looking at police engagement with the public that is void of belligerence. In other words, people need not engage the police only when police is enforcing the law. We must be able to see the police officers engaging the community in, on educa educative grounds, engagement grounds, where we can build trust and share information. So when we end the tactical regime that militarizes the police, we can have a proper policing that intelligently engage the public 
where we can share information and turn this information into intelligence. We don't have barracks abroad for police in any country. Why should we be proposing that in Nigeria? Police are part of the society. They are the public, and the public is also the police. And that's what exactly what the police reform bill is going to reflect. Thank you very much, Shagun, for talking to us on the news. Thank you very much. All right, let me come to our studio guest now, Balaho. Um, what's your reaction to um, his contribution so far when it comes to, you know, these insistent attacks on civilians by officials? Okay. <clears throat> it's reflective of the systemic nature of the problem, which um, when something is systemic, you have to fix it from the root. If you don't do that, you may be curing symptoms rather than the disease itself. Okay. This gentleman was, you know, he lost his life. And I think there was a protest the next day. And there were also still news items saying that maybe people were even killed at that protest. Protest, yes. If the former time it was SARS, the second time was it SARS as well? Maybe not. The Apple killings of some years ago were not by SARS. So there's something about the, the system, the police system, that keeps bringing up all these issues consistently. And that is what we need to fix. Uh, on the surface of it right now, um, <clears throat> scrapping the uh, organization and all those, uh, those are palliatives and it might help to at least maybe reduce the number of lives that we're losing indiscriminately. But the true solution has to go right deep to the root of the problem and deal with it systemically. Okay, let's look at the death of this uh, footballer and uh, the police uh, reaction, um, initial reaction to it. This is something that has become familiar with the, the initial efforts. It looks like an effort to cover up um, a situation that, you know, reflects badly on their image. That contradicts with what eyewitnesses um, had to say uh, to the media on what happened. When, when you think about this and then you relate that to all the effort about rebranding, is there something um, more that can be done in that regard? It's still part of the reforms that we're talking about. You cannot, if, if you get dirt and put it in a bag and you put a wrapping paper behind it, uh, that could be some sort of rebranding. But what is inside is still rotten. And you, 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 there's a limit to how much you can rebrand that, you know. And we, that is what we're we are seeing in that space. Typically, uh, an organization that is meant to protect the people, if it's found to have killed the same people it's to protect, you're likely to have all those uh, defense trying to say, oh, it didn't happen. But you see, most of these things, um, people are there. It did not happen in isolation, and it can be investigated. And people will come out and tell you, no, that is not what happened. This is what happened. So I think as part of the palliative, the police need to uh, be more forthcoming when matters like this happen. I, I think the police, apart from the initial uh, comment, uh, the idea has stepped in, and a few things seem to be I mean, happening address in that, that, well, in that well, space. Let's look at it. We're still talking about police reforms. The police... Um, has had issues plaguing their existence uh, from time. And now we have um, this uh, regional outfit coming up, uh, Amotaku, for instance. Correct. What are the likelihood that, you know, similar abuse will not occur with these people that will now be invested with certain powers to um, manage security in their locality? Of course, the, the new regional uh, outfits are also prone to the same problems. If we don't set them up properly, with the right legal and institutional framework. Uh, these are part of the fears of a lot of people when these institutions were coming up. That look, where is the modus operandi? How would they run? How would they be funded? What is the structure going to be like? What is the recruitment policy going to be like? Without addressing all of that in such a way as to create transparency about the operations of those organizations. They are bound, they are susceptible to being hijacked by people with totally different motives from what drove 
the, the, the establishment of those institutions. So we have the same problem brewing if we don't deal with the root right from. We, we have an opportunity now. That's the beauty of it. Unlike the police, which is an institution that is over 60, 70 years old in Nigeria, Amotekun is fresh. We've seen all the flaws in the police act that we are trying to deal with. We must ensure that in things like Amotekun, we get it right from the root from day one. Okay, uh, before I let you go, I want to ask about the kind of punishment and sanction that will send strong signals. Why we wait for those reforms? We can't continue to live with such incompetences and inhumanity. So what kind of punishment do you think will send a strong message to these institutions about the sanctity of human lives? Quick dispensation of justice. There's no, you wearing the police uniform doesn't ask, make you kill someone and get away with it. But the problem has been when these matters come up, there are the buzz, the usual buzz on the media for a while, and then it all dies down. So let's follow through. And on the part of the police, let the prosecution be fast and made public. And when the judgment comes, let's also know. Uh, there have been a few cases when people got punished. I know, I know the Apple killers, for example, were sentenced to death, you know. But those things happen to take a take long too, time to happen. Time. Let's punish. Anything we don't want a repeat of, we must punish it and make that punishment public as well. That's the way to go. Thank you very much for coming on the news.